Zachary Fowler and you're watching 87 Days, the complete reenactment of all I did out on History Channel's Alone Season 3, but as if I did it here in Maine. And today, we're gonna catch and cook a pizza in the Dutch oven. We're gonna fire it up with a bow drill. Lots to do, so let's get doing it. Nice, looking good inside. I was kind of worried that uh, you know, in the springtime, too much water would come from outside without more drainage but it seems to be okay. Alright, this is gonna be awesome. Excited about this. Pizza is my favorite dish. And uh, I don't eat a lot of it lately because I've been doing the ketogenic diet. And uh, so every once in a while I will splurge and have a couple slices of pizza. Not like I used to back in the day, which got me to my bigger state before going on alone. Uh, so now I just enjoy it moderately and then go back the next day to my ketogenic diet, which is a, if you haven't seen that before, you can see my video linked uh, down below where it shows my thin self after alone and uh, how I've switched to the diet. Time for the uh, stick breaking ceremony, right? <laughs> oh, it looks like we've had some visitors while I was gone. I think somebody's been helping themselves to my paper towels I left up here. I'm gonna have to make a trap. All right, fire starting time, and we're gonna do it with a bow drill. I have never started a fire before with a bow drill outside of last Sunday. I tried it on alone at the boot camp and never managed to accomplish it. Only one person at the boot camp before alone managed to start a fire that was young Zach who uh, ended up cutting himself with the ax and leaving early. And he's mad skills, primitive wise. I've got this bow drill that I successfully started a fire with, that squirrel's going nuts out there, last week um, in my live stream. And I thought we'd do it again out here and then head out into the woods and see if we can't get the materials to make one without using this. I've learned so much from this bow drill that was sent to me. I, I, I feel like, by starting the fire with this, now I could easily go and get the materials and make myself. It's never been something I was really interested in doing. You know, I'm, I like carrying a ferro rod, flint and steel with uh, char cloth. I, I, you know, and I, I've never really been all that like, oh, I need to start one with a bow drill. But I've always felt guilty that it wasn't something that I was had accomplished already. Now I have, this kit is awesome. It comes with the spindles comes with all the stuff you need. It is, I, I highly recommend it. It's linked below in the description so you can get it. It is, they have different versions. This is the more expensive version that comes with two blocks, three spindles, a patch of leather, and the backing uh, ceramic block that has, it's uh, glazed inside so it's uh, less friction. And um, you can, uh, you can get the basic kit with like one block, one spindle, and no extra stuff for like 20 bucks. Or you spend like 45 bucks and you get all this stuff and it even comes with oakum, which is like the stuff that we used to cock the boats with. As well as hemp line, things to build your bird's nest out of. We're not gonna use that stuff today. We'll use the stuff that I picked up as I was walking up here to build the bird's nest, which was uh, reed heads and grass. Get a nice, uh, nice bird's nest out of this. So. First, we'll build the bird's nest before we get the bow drill going, because that's always good. We got our kindle, kindling there. Got our reed heads here. And build up a nice big bird's nest. Just working it around into a literal bird's nest, basically. Don't want to bother going too small. You want it nice and big, so you're not fighting it later. I'm gonna put some of these really dry reed heads right in the middle. I'll put my ember right into there and then I will be able to fold it closed 
and blow it to life, put it in there, and get the fire going. There, so we set that to the side. My gas mask bag. You know, I've been thinking about something. How do you guys feel about, you know, when people plug stuff all the time? Leave it in the comments below. You know, I, I have this thing, bow drill set. I'm plugging it. The link is below if you want to buy one. I highly recommend it. I don't highly recommend stuff that I think is junk. So I don't think I'm doing you wrong by, by mentioning that. And uh, you support this channel by purchasing the stuff if you ever see anything that you like. And the description below has uh, many things down there that uh, I use in the videos and a link to my new Amazon Influencer Market, which is a, basically it's a, an, a Fowler um, store on Amazon that you can buy all the stuff you see in my videos, all the stuff I film with, all the cameras I use, all the stuff I use in my everyday life, like um, MCT oil I use for my ketogenic diet to make bulletproof coffee, a little bit of everything. Uh, the first two times I tried this, I was unsuccessful. The third try in the live stream last week, nailed it. And I haven't, every time I've tried it since, like five times, I've always gotten a fire on the first attempt. As well as showing a friend with this kit who has never done anything like this before. I showed him how to do it, and in one try, he got a fire going and blew it to life. I got the board, you got a V-notch in it, and you're gonna wanna take and make with your knife a little mark here so that the spindle stays right where you want it. You just want it to be the center of that, to be inside of, like here, right? See, so that's gonna be where the spindle goes, and then the stuff can come out of it here and build up a pile of your ember right there. Place that on top of your piece of leather. Grab my spindle, slip that into the bow drill. Nice and tight, locks right in. This thing comes completely ready to go. Pop that in my block. Your foot on it, pin her down, and you're good to go. We start spinning. And what we don't want to do at first is just get it going. Not gonna try too hard. Just just let it work itself into a uh, position. There we go, I see a little glow. And this is where you don't want to panic. You don't need to rush. It's gonna burn away on its own. Give your block a little tap so you can get that free. <clears throat> now you got your, oops. Little ember there, we keep it going. Don't want to blow on it or sneeze and blow it away. You see it? All right, now we gotta get it into the bird's nest without destroying it. And then we're gonna take the bird's nest and put it on top of it and then flip it over. Fan it a little bit. Oh yeah, we got it for sure. Fold that closed. And those of you with beards, this is where you want to be careful depending on how fluffy your bird's nest is. Oh yeah. See you know what I mean? You could lose a beard that way. Phew. Getting smoky in here. I'm gonna head out and get some materials to make my own bow drill. The woods are just full of life today. It is springtime in Maine and it is beautiful. Look at this. Deer droppings, I thought I heard something. As I was coming down over the hill, I think I startled them and sent them off running. 
I don't know if you can see it on the, the way I can just looking at it but the ground is just turned up everywhere from turkeys and deer and everybody coming through here and just having a springtime feast of the old acorns and just treading up all of the, of the leaves. I got my silky in the pack saw, but I thought I'd do something fun and use my cash belt saw that's in there, a wire saw, to make a bow saw. Inside of here is, well, slingshot ammo, and there we go. I came out, the first thing that popped out as I stuck my finger in it. Tons of space in here. This is awesome. I sell them on my website. They're the best. There's a wire saw. So we're gonna make a bow wire saw to cut the materials I need to make the bow, bow drill. That's a lot of bows. Very nice, my whole kit was in the water last week when I was in uh, the river race with the reed boat. And all the stuff inside the belt is in mint condition. All right, this thing is cool, check this out. So you got your stick, take the wire saw, saw the branch in half. Then take the wire saw and saw down the branch, creating a notch at the end. That way the blade can get stuck in the notch, figure out where the other end's gonna end up. About there. This is this is where it gets cool. Saw into the branch halfway. And then once you're in halfway, you saw down like this, and you make your other notch, and then go back and saw the rest of the way through it. Snap it off. Now your two notches are made. You used it being stuck where it was to, to brace it while you prepared it. Boom. Oh, it's a C sharp. I have no idea. I'm not musically inclined. Yeehaw. Let's cut some wood. Oh, that thing works amazing. All right, I think I'll keep this out. Might want to nip some more stuff off on the way up to the shelter. Nice. Look at that cut. This thing's a champ. Go back and get that pizza on. I'm working up an appetite playing in the woods. <laughs> oh, look at that. Nice little fork up there. Right there. Sweet little trimming. And she'll be gorgeous. Nice little slingshot. Okay, back from our mooch. And uh, got our stuff, our supplies. Fire's got some serious coals going on. Be able to cook the pizza. Let's get that prepped and, uh, prepped and cooking. All right, to make your pizza, you will need one cast iron Dutch oven. You could probably do it with a cast iron pot if you got a fire going, had enough coals, and you just buried the whole thing over while it was inside the pot. But the beauty of the Dutch oven, as you will see, if you've seen my Catch and Cook the Easter Bunny video, the top of it has a lip on it, and you can easily just pile coals on it and use it without much effort. And then, paper towels, one pizza dough, parchment paper so that you can get the pizza in there and it'll cook on top of the parchment paper otherwise you can cook it in there in the bottom of the pan but then you may have a hard time getting underneath of it and getting it out without destroying your pizza. Pizza sauce, pizza cheese olive oil, and the most important ingredient in my favorite pizza, rosemary. Fresh, fresh rosemary, very important. You put this in the olive oil in the pan at the bottom. If you do it in a cast iron pan on a grill, oh, so good. Take the rosemary, chop it up real fine, 
with the olive oil, a little bit of salt in the bottom of the pan. So good, that's what we're gonna do today. Except for not in the bottom of the pan, on the parchment paper in the bottom of the pan. So we'll see how that turns out. And one log of pepperoni, which, holy cow, that thing was huge, huh? I, it was just what they had, so. First things first, take our cast iron pot and a piece of parchment paper. We're gonna line the bottom with the parchment paper. Do not confuse parchment paper with uh, butcher's paper or something like that, yuck. The butcher's paper is plastic coated, that would be disgusting. <clears throat> prep up some rosemary. Oh, I gotta say something for the top of the pizza too. Pizza was the only food I really thought about when I was out there on alone. Like, man, I wish I had a pizza. I sang about it all the time. Fish head soup, I wish you were a pizza. Tell you, 87 days of being alone and eating nothing but fish head soup. Once or twice the dandelion roots, some grubs. Pizza was like always on my mind. As well as my family, obviously. But food wise, pizza. And it was the first meal I chose to cook when I got home with the family there, grilling it on the grilling it on the grill, some nice grilled pizza deep dish, olive oil, the rosemary from my garden. Of course we're in Maine, so every year you gotta put the rosemary out and then bring it back in and back out again. Oh, eggplant. Ah, oh, I didn't get well the eggplant's out of season. I was looking for it the other day and I didn't find any. So I imagine there wasn't any today when I went to the store. Eggplant, fried eggplant. You salt it, let it sit, cut it into uh, I don't know, 3 16 slices and you fry it in some olive oil. Put it on some paper towels and then you put that on your pizza. Oh man, is that good. That is the best pizza in the whole world. Fried eggplant, don't batter it, nothing. And I like to sometimes too take and mix, um, mix a great sauce. Use half fettuccine Alfredo sauce and half um, half uh, marinara sauce for your pizza. Oh, just adds that extra little to make the pizza good. All right, so we take some of that, put that in our pan at the bottom on top of our parchment paper. And I'll save some to go on top. Now that that's in there, the rosemary. Put some olive oil, about a tablespoon, I think. And as you work the dough around, you wanna make sure that it dough works it around underneath the entire thing. And, of course, one of the most important ingredients, the old real salt. All right, so she's nice and, nice and glazed at the bottom of the pan. There, the bottom of the parchment paper. All, all rosemary and salt and olive oil. All worked around in there. Now the dough. These doughs are just from the grocery store. I never really got into making my own dough. This one's a garlic dough. I'm gonna use about half of it. I'll cook the other half of this later for the kids. Ooh, maybe I'll make garlic knots. You roll out the dough as thin as you can, cover it with butter and garlic and mozzarella cheese. Roll them up, slice them like cinnamon buns, but oh man, is that good. That is good. Work our dough, and you're out in the bush, so you don't have to worry about being sanitary. I'm just kidding. I don't know, some people complain about it. I, I know I spent 87 days living out in the woods, eating the same pot of fish head soup, just adding more stuff to it, using the same chopsticks the entire time I was there, and just licking them clean and sticking them in the wall and using them to eat the, that fish every day. And I had a little fish rake thing I used for raking the meat off of the fish. Never, I felt only better when I came back after that time. All right, now you got your dough ready. Get her in there. Now, we can put the toppings in. Tomato sauce. This is just sauce. I always buy just the sauce and do it myself. You buy sauce with glass jars and stuff like that. They're like, piled full of sugar and all kinds of extra stuff that you don't need. You find the right company that has just sauce. You can get it without the extra added sugar for the most part. 
It still has the natural fruit sugars in it. There we go. Doesn't take much. Oh, this is going to be delicious. Rest of that rosemary. Ah, time to do up the garlic. After my last time of complaining about garlic, so many people put in the comments like, how you can do the garlic better? It's not that. I know all the million different ways to do the garlic. One thing I didn't know, as somebody said though, was uh, put it in a jar and shake it up. I, and that worked pretty good too. But uh, it's just, it's so annoying. Especially when you get the tiny cloves. You know, you open it, it looks like a giant clove and it breaks down into seven little slivers. Fire's hot. It's getting hot in here. Take off all your winter clothes. It's getting so hot. I want to take my vest off. Chop and then crush with the side of your blade your garlic. That's what makes garlic taste the best on your pizza. And of course, another beauty of using the fresh garlic is uh, it sanitizes your cutting board as you're using it. Now, pepperoni is the key to a successful pizza. Thin slices. You want your pepperoni slices. I grew up in Vermont. Ted's Pizza is the best pizza in the world. It's so good. You, you, oh, best pizza in the world. And they cut their pepperonis just right. There's the right amount of thinness so that they curl up with these little puddles of grease in each and every one in this explosion of flavor. So a lot of people though, they cut their pepperonis too big and you get these giant wads of heartburn in every bite with a pepperoni and that's not what you want to do to pizza. That destroys a pizza. The trick to a good pizza is a thin, see hopefully I can do it with this knife, is a thin and this giant log, a thin sliced pepperoni. So thin that you possibly even fail to cut all the way through the log. It comes off in half shavings at times until you're really good at it, you know? It's better to have little shavings of pepperoni that aren't full circles than to have a giant a giant piece of heartburn on your pizza. At home if you're cooking your pizza, crank that oven right up to 550. Awesome! Pizza is ready to go. Let's do it up. And throw the lid on it. Get my nice hot coals. Cover the lid. Like I've said, fire needs buddies, so don't be liberal. Cover the entire top with coals. Even a little bit heaping if you can. Because if they're too thin of a layer, they're just gonna go out. They need to work off of each other to encourage each other to, to draw the oxygen in and to help it continue to do what it's supposed to do, burn. Pot stick. Oh yeah, nailed it. Now wait four hours and you got yourself pizza. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll let it do its thing and uh, see if I can't make a bow drill with stuff that I just went out and cut. make a, uh, a bearing block for the head of it. Three days later, she has her applications. Nothing's gonna beat the silky though. Cut a little over halfway through and then I'm gonna split the block off with the shovel. Split my little block off. I think this is what you call uh, your bearing block. They put down on top of your spindle. Forgive me if I get the lingo wrong. I try to fix it sometimes in post with words, but honestly, I am bad 
at knowing what things are called. I'm, my dyslexia means I, you know, I think of it like a file cabinet and I store things in just the wrong place all, all the time. The deeper the hole, the more friction it's gonna cause. So you don't want it to be too incredibly deep and stuff. As little as contact and then the friction will cause it to burn a little bit of a smoother hole into it. And then once you burn a little bit of a hole into it, you can lube it up with a uh, acorn. Works great at this time of year, it's hard to find an acorn. You take the acorn meat and mash it into the hole. Works as a great lubricant. And if you don't got that, you got bush wax right there. All right, we got our nice board. I'm gonna put a notch in it at 45 degrees into the wood. Let's see if we can get it with the uh, cedar first as a spindle. You wanna whittle the whole thing as straight and smooth as possible. Well, not smooth, but like straight as possible. You don't want it going like wonky, you know, as like, as you're turning it, say this is exaggerated aspect, it's going whoo, it'll go whoo, whoo, whoo. You'll be popping free all the time. There we go, so I've whittled one end, so it's a little pointier and that's gonna go with my bearing block on it. And this end's, a little stubbier, and that's the end. I'm gonna try and get the, uh, it's gonna be turning against my wood that I'm getting fire from. Oh, I hear cracking. And she's in. Phew. That might be a bit tight. All right, got our bearing block. Let's see if I got it. Oop. Looking more like I'm coming closer to get a fire in my top block here than I am down there. So I actually Q-tipped my ears pretty heavily the other day. So I'm going, not so primitive, but using what I have at hand. Something to grease with my little socket there at the top. Pepperoni. What, what's more greasy than a little bit of pepperoni in the, in the bearing block? That should do it. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's make this fire happen. Oh yeah, that pepperoni is working great. Well, I have to say that's it. Attempt number one is a fail. I'm not seeing the shavings I want to out of the cedar. Oh, I smell the pizza cooking. I think I better take it off. Oh, would you look at that? Pizza is done. Oh, yeah. Looks a little crispy around the edges. I might have gone a second too long. Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. Definitely overcooked the parchment paper. Wow, that was only like five minutes. So 20 minutes is too long. I nailed it on the cooking time on top. Not so much on the cooking time on the back side. Yikes. Oh well, I will. Got a spoon? 
Make the best of it, eat the top of it off. That's the best part of the pizza anyways, right? <laughs> ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this pizza. It's time out in the woods. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's see how she tastes. I imagine she tastes pretty darn good either way. Here we go. Mmm. Still good. Well, 55% of uh, what's best on the pizza is still here. I just don't get that crispy bottom. Well, I got a crispy bottom. <laughs> Another burnt offering to the Lord here. Well, that's all right. I feel there's just another opportunity to come back and do it better again next time, huh? Hey, look at that. I got a nice slingshot target. Let's do it up. All right, there's always a sunnier side to a burnt side of pizza. Let's take her out. All right, got my favorite ash slingshot that I made in uh, several videos back now, I think. I'm gonna take out that burnt pizza. I wonder if I got enough ammo to put a smiley face in it. <laughs> I'd say that's a smiley face if there ever was one. I even got the nose. Yeehaw. And give it to the squirrels. I think I'll take all this. I gotta head out, pick up my girls, and try it again a little bit later. See if we can't get it. We gotta head off to Vermont. So, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Sorry I wasn't able to get a fire going for you, but we will get it. I mean, that's what this all this is all about. This 87 Days series is just as much for me as it is to be able to make a video and share it with you. To be able to test these things out and learn how to better do these things for myself so that uh, I can be victorious a second time when I go out there and have to face Alan and Dave and the other winners of Alone for the All-Stars one, right? Thanks for watching. Fowler out. Yeah, totally overcooked my pizza into a nice cracker. Hi, hey, bae.